This is the Elgato 4KX. It is an HDMI 2.1 capture card, which I bought with my own money for $229.99. In this video, I'm going to talk a bit about what a capture card is, a little bit about the 4KX, why it matters that it's an HDMI 2.1 capture card versus the older capture cards out there, my experiences with the capture card, and some of the issues I had with the capture card, and whether I recommend this capture card. This video will be timestamped, so if there's a specific section that you're looking for, feel free to skip ahead to the part that you're looking for and consider subscribing for more videos like this one. Of note, all the gameplay capture you see in this video has been captured with the 4KX. What is a capture card? A capture card is a device that takes the input from a device such as a gaming console, camera, or second computer via HDMI, acts as a receiver for the input data, and is able to then pass through that input to the TV or monitor as well as sending the data to a computer to be able to record or stream that data. The capture card takes the connected device and makes it into a signal that your computer can actually utilize. You can use software like OBS or the Elgato 4K capture utility to record, stream, or both. Most of the time, if you're watching a YouTube video or a live stream that has gameplay for a console like the PS5, Nintendo Switch, or Xbox Series, they're typically using a capture card of some sort. The capture card itself does not do the encoding, so you'll still need a device to do that. Capture cards do introduce a little bit of latency in the system as there is a processing that occurs in the capture card. But as you can see from this chart where EposFox has tested a bunch of different capture cards, the Elgato 4KX only has about 35 milliseconds of lag and is on the faster side of the capture cards he has tested. The Elgato 4KX is a $229.99 USB 3.2 Type-C device capable of HDMI 2.1 pass-through of up to 4K 144Hz and capture of up to the same. The chart on the screen now shows the resolutions you can pass through and record. The resolution and refresh rates for the captures are less for HDR versus SDR captures because of the increased data required. And if you want to capture at the highest refresh rates, you'll have to capture in OBS as the 4K capture utility will only record up to 60 frames per second. As an example on how to read this chart, if you're going to play a game on the PS5 at 4K 120 HDR and you want to record it in HDR, the highest you'll be able to record is 1440p 60 HDR. However, if you want to record in SDR, you could pass through the 4K 120 HDR and record in 4K 120 SDR. This is among the best capture cards that you can buy today. Also, if you use this capture card, you can use Streamlink in the Elgato 4K capture utility so that you can use it as a source in OBS while at the same time recording clean gameplay without any of your overlays. This does require the use of a plugin that I'll link down in the description. However, when I tested this feature, there is a significant amount of latency introduced, but if you do want to capture the clean gameplay while also streaming with your overlays, this becomes a viable option. The capture card comes with a nice HDMI 2.1 cable that's braided, as well as a USB 3.2 Gen 2 Type-C cable that is also braided. What difference does an HDMI 2.1 capture card make versus some of the older captures that are out there? HDMI 2.1 is a standard that has been out there for a few years already. This is one of the few HDMI 2.1 capture cards that have been released. HDMI 2.1 is what allows for the newer game consoles like the PS5 and Xbox series to allow 4K resolution with 120Hz refresh rate as well as variable refresh rate. With older HDMI, HDMI 2.0, the maximum resolution and refresh rate was 4K60, and it did not support variable refresh rate. So higher resolutions at higher refresh rates. Variable refresh rate is a technology that allows for the screen to change its refresh rate to match the frames per second that you're getting currently in the game. This prevents screen tearing and allows you to have a good experience even if the game is not running at a smooth frame rate. So what exactly is the big deal about having a capture card that has this standard? Having HDMI 2.1 allows you to pass through those higher refresh rates as well as variable refresh rate while still being able to record at a set frame rate. With previous capture cards, because they were, did not use HDMI 2.1, you were limited to being able to play a game at 4K 60Hz even if you had a console that could handle more because of the limitation of the older HDMI standard and you would also not get variable refresh rate. Having a capture card that now allows for HDMI 2.1 means that you can experience the hardware you have at its maximum capability while still being able to capture or record the gameplay to use for content and not having to make a decision whether you're going to hamstring your own experience for the sake of recording or experience the full capability 
but not being able to capture the gameplay. No more need to compromise for the sake of getting that gameplay capture you want. Now, for some of my experiences using the capture card, the card itself was very easy to set up and use. While you can use it without downloading any new software, I wanted to also test the Elgato 4K capture utility, so I downloaded that and found it very easy to navigate. As you can see on the screen now, I was able to choose the format I wanted to record, which device was going to handle the video encoding, as well as the format for the stream link, which is stated to be in beta. Of note, there is an option of whether you want to record in HDR or not, which will then make it record at a lower resolution than what the settings page says, as it will go to the next highest resolution and refresh rate that can record HDR as seen on the chart that I'll put on the screen again. I also opened up the capture card in OBS and the source was easily found and added to the scenes. So if you are somebody who doesn't want to use the Elgato 4K capture utility, the device was completely plug and play with OBS. The device itself has no other lights other than a status LED on the front, which is nice because I don't need a device that has a bunch of RGB for no reason. However, I also acknowledge that this might not be the aesthetic that everyone enjoys. The capture card is able to connect to a wide array of different devices, so I tested the capture card using my PS5, the iPhone 15 Pro Max, and my iPad Pro to test a variety of different devices. If you are wanting the full capability of the device, you need to make sure to connect an HDMI 2.1 cable, which the 4KX comes with one, so you'll need to make sure you have another to be able to connect to the other side. You simply connect the desired console to the capture card where it says HDMI in and then connect the HDMI out port to the monitor or TV that you plan on displaying the device. Then use the included USB 3.2 Gen 2 Type-C cable to connect to your computer as that is what is going to send the data to the computer. With the PS5, I had to make sure that I had turned off HDCP in HDMI settings, which is high bandwidth digital content protection. This will make it so that you can't watch YouTube, Netflix, or other streaming content on the PlayStation with the capture card connected. With the PS5 connected, I was both watching my monitor as well as the capture preview screen, and there was minimal latency in the two feeds, which was quite nice and validates the EPOS Vox latency testing that he conducted. You could feasibly play off just the preview screen in OBS or the capture utility if you were forced to without having a very noticeable input lag. With the iPhone and iPad, I did have to use a USB-C dock with HDMI, but they were both very much plug and play and gave me no issues. The capture card can be used on a USB 3.2 Gen 1 port. You will get a reduced resolution for your recordings. This brings me to some of the issues that I had using the capture card. I have a laptop that I knew did not have a USB-C 3.2 Gen 2 port, but it did have a Type A 3.2 Gen 1 port, so I wanted to try and get it to work even if it was at a reduced resolution. The cables that I had at home were not USB 3.2, so I was not able to get it to work properly at first. Being persistent, I didn't give up and ordered this USB 3.2 Gen 2 adapter off of Amazon and was able to get the device to successfully pass through 4K 120 to my TV while recording 1440p60 on the laptop. If you do have a quality USB 3.2 Gen 2 cable with type A on one side and type C on the other side, you may be able to replicate the same, but as I didn't, this dongle did the trick for me. Although it was at a reduced resolution because it was a USB 3.2 Gen 1 port and not the required USB 3.2 Gen 2 port. Another issue I had is that sometimes the Elgato 4K capture program would start recording at 1440p HDR even though I had clicked the button to not record HDR. Simply closing the application and opening it again solved this issue, but this was definitely a bit of an annoying bug that existed. What I wanted to happen was for it to pass through 4K 120 and record 4K 60 SDR, and once I closed the application and opened back up, it would work just fine. This should be something that is easily fixed through a software fix. Now, some final thoughts on the Elgato 4KX. At $229, the device is definitely not a cheap one, but I have been wanting an HDMI 2.1 capture card ever since the new generation of consoles came out that needed HDMI 2.1 in order to maximize the resolution and refresh rates available. The cables that come with the device are very nice, and the device itself is simple and just simply works as long as you use it within the specifications. If you have a USB 3.2 Gen 2 port, and need a capture card for the current gen of consoles, I would definitely recommend this device. I like how simple the device looks and how it isn't covered in a bunch of RGB, which seems to be the go-to for a lot of the companies out there today. Let me know what you think of the Elgato 4KX. Are you gonna get one? What features appeal most about the device to you? 
let me know down in the comments down below and consider subscribing to the channel.